So why we no kuku release the thing in one time? Everybody say yeah yeah. Yeah yeah. What could that mean is Gary Kulemi? <laughs> my, that's my name. My friends call me Lemmy Gary. Um, I'm a graphic designer, but first and foremost, fine artist. And graphic designer and illustrator. Born, bred, and buttered in Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, Africa. Predestination, one word. Um, I believe we were all born, you know, with a destiny. We have a role, a purpose on art, uh, each and every one of us. My earliest memories go back to when I was about uh, maybe five, six. Um, I remember vividly. I was born in a place called Agege in Lagos, and um, I used to draw, you know, like right on the floor. On, on the streets, I'll, I'll be drawing in the sand. Uh, there was this incident, um, which is always great in my memory. Um, uh, there was this beautiful lady uh, who was taking us in mathematics. Um, her name was Cecilia. And uh, those days, there was this uh, popular song, Cecilia, by Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> you know, who used to sing with her name, Cecilia, you're breaking my heart. You know? Cecilia, you're breaking my heart. You know, that, and I'll be doing a drawing of her. As she's, as she's teaching. Sometimes she just calls on me, Emmanuel, you know? And she said, what did I say just now? And I get lost. So, um, you know, all, all that in, in, in retrospect, you know, I just started remembering, okay, no wonder I have to be an artist. Uh, so eventually, I ended up, you know, becoming one. Um, like I said, a destiny, destiny comes. I don't know how founding. <laughs> Afro pop art. Um, I don't want to lay claims, uh, but Afro pop art is um, a tag I gave to my recent works um, in the last um, two, three years. Um, I try to refresh myself, recreate myself. So, because it's digital age and all the experiences I've garnered in my in my life, you know, as an artist, because I artist life, life is art for me. Um, I've gone through the gamut, you know, of, of art entirely. So all that uh, uh, experience, you know, I, I felt, you know, I needed to wrap them into something. So I came up with this um, style. It's um, arty and it's popish. Uh, popish in the sense that it's popular art uh, because you know it's commercial. So and I'm an African. I've uh, defended Africa all my life as a Pan-Africanist. So. That's where I get the Afro pop art from. Now there was this journalist called Babatunde Harrison. So Babatunde Harrison was a journalist uh, Sunday Punch. I think he uh, handled the entertainment desk. Incidentally, like two days before that day, he and Fela were discussing, you know, like ideas because Fela's uh, music was getting um, uh, more social conscious and political. You know, that they were discussing ideas like, you know, something on the cover or something. As he was telling me, you know, I didn't actually believe him. I thought he was drunk because he was coming from the drunk place. Then I was wondering, does he know Fela? You know, you know Fela was huge already. Uh, and um, he said he was going to give me a test. So the next day he brought a, a photograph of Fela from the Punch newspaper collection and asked me to do a portrait of that as a test. So within 24 hours, <laughs> I did that. So by next evening, I was ready. So I was waiting at the corridor. So I, I, I saw him walking down the road, right, the street. So I called him, I said, oh, cool. So I showed him, you know, like this. And he said, huh, you finished? And he said, come, come, I'm not going to drink now. Let's go. I, I'm taking you to Fela. You know, I thought it was a, a joke. So I, I, I told my mom, and my mom said I should be careful. You know, Fela was notorious already. <laughs> so the man hailed a taxi and took me to Fela. And that was the beginning. Uh, we got to Fela, uh, Fela eventually came, I'm trying to cut it short now. <laughs> Fela came out from, from the house, I was uh, in the compound, and he saw the walk, and he said two words. It was the first time ever in my life I had those words. And he said, he said, uh, wow, god damn. <laughs>
<laughs> and that was the beginning of the relationship. Fuck! This song about the stupid Yeye leaders we will get for Africa here. 2010. She um, um, got signed up to Legend Factory Records. Legend Factory Records is a company, a record company in New York. Um, and I was in London. Uh, the general manager of the company, Brian Long, just called me and said, ah, let me. Um, Shewon Kuti says he wants you to do his cover. He said, ah, has he spoken to you yet? I said, no. I said, ah, oh, really? You know, so I called up Shewon immediately. And Shewon said, yes, I want you to do my cover. <laughs> you know, I was smiling like, wow, destiny. You know, destiny, 30, 33 years after my first fella cover. You know. So now I'm thinking, with Shewon, he has, um, 10 tracks, unlike fella who had just one or two tracks, you know. Now, there are even more things to show. Because if I decide to illustrate each track, you know, the message in each track, you know, I have so much. But you know, I, I played with them, I said, okay, I was going to be minimalist, but also at the same time, effectively illustrate them. So I did that very effectively, and I used a plain white background. I said, I'm not going to plug this up. And believe you me, 100%, everyone has commanded that comment. And I, I, I've, I've had some people, you know, uh, express surprise, like, how did you come with this? How did you do this? You know, and I feel very happy. Yes, good. <laughs> I'm a Bonafide alumni of the University of Calakuta. <laughs> so, you know, my observations, that was the stages of observation. I met Fela, I learned a lot and all that. So I was going through observation at that point in time. Then, after observation stage, I'm talking about life now, you get to inspiration stage. You get inspired to do something. So right now, I've gotten the inspiration stage. Now it's obligation stage that I mean. <laughs> the obligation stage is what role are you going to play in society? What role are you going to play in your community? What role are you going to play in your nation, in your continent, and in the world at large? So my role is my role. So it's constant. It's called Explore. Like it's intended, you know, two lovers, you know, you explore your souls. So I am the explore, um, explore, uh, the original explorer here. <laughs> so he says, Lemmy was here. <laughs> the soul. At the show key, um, the album was called Patience. Now it's set of drawings, proposed animation for Fela's film when it was being shot then. Uh, the film called The Black President I never came to be. Um, the soundtrack was born in the house with Fela's property, so the film didn't come out. Um, I had the idea, which, you know, is very futuristic. You know, from 1976, I was thinking of having a song animated in the film. The song um, is titled A Miss So this is a verse from the song. The other verses are here, and this, the drawing book still survived now. Um, Okay, this is the beginning. Like in the song, it says, um, Gorilla, we run from bush. He enter Lagos, he enter Boso. The gorilla is living in the bush. He's approaching Lagos. Um, gets closer to the city. And everyone is, you know, running helter skelter. He tries to get inside the bus. And everyone jumps out. <laughs> And uh, at that point in time, Fela said, Tola, this person, that's Fela's um, SUV with the Africa 70s, that's Fela and the girls. And this is um, the logo for Africa 70 that I created for Fela uh, branding in 1975. This logo was on all his cars, he had 14 vehicles. So when uh, we traveled, uh, like to Ghana, to Cameroon as well. We went in a convoy of 14 vehicles and all the, you know, all the cars had this on there, and the dogs. So, it's like Africa 70, you know, the black president is in town. <laughs> this is um, the back cover of Zombie, Mr. Follow Follow. So I recreated it here for the Afropop series, Afropop art series. And like I, I said earlier on, I used to write my comments on the covers, some of them. Well, here is the comment I have on this. I said, Africa, my continent, is the deepest sunk in economic backwardness. 
She doesn't think for herself. She has the most appalling problems because she follows and follows colonial methods in all her doings, in all her do's and don'ts. Africa is far from change and rapid progress, relevant progress, because her colonial experience weighs a death weight upon her. This can get us nowhere. We will always be at the bottom of the pit, the vanquished, the victim, and the, the fooled. We need a change, a change African quick. You know? <laughs>